obviously started playing here in Mexico, where Mexicans were from Mexico. So our first shows were always here in our home and then just across the country. And I feel like we've seen it grow over the years and how we started and just our crowd. And it makes me so excited so freaking that excited, people yeah. my age are looking for this energy and like this music specifically. female-led rock bands, female, like, only Complete woman lead. rock bands. So she started working as a young teen, a kid. We didn't even start it as women. Like, we started out as little girls yeah. in this children. industry. Children, literally. Yes. It involves a lot. And we were doing it with our parents. Like we were we were pretty protected. Like they supported us so much. They got us into lessons. Like they bought us our instruments. Like they give us the liberty to like really concentrate yeah. on music. Because imagine you're like just a teenager, maybe 13, and you want to do this. But of course, there's tons of different things that you want to try out and do. So like sticking with it was also hard, you know? started out as a five member band. Our parents are part of the band. Right now, yeah. obviously, our family has grown a bit more like, with our team, our management, and everyone that works with us. But as we keep on working, that is always like the center of everything. And everyone yeah. we start working with starts feeling like family because we've always had that vibe. How to be like disciplined and responsible and like level-headed yeah that, and, I, and i feel like that's really important for the industry that we're in mm -hmm. so a big hug to mom and dad for everything <laughs> What we think really got us into this energetic music and rock and roll was definitely the rock band, the, the video, video game. game. We loved to play that game and it was so fun that we just like looked at the screen and we just, oh, we want to do that. I told my dad like, I want to play the guitar and he's like, are you sure? And I was like, of course! By the first week, my fingers hurt so much that I was like, please, no! But I fell in love with it and there was no going back. I've been playing for 13 years. <gasps> I don't like that number, but okay, 13 <laughs> years. And uh, well, I've been playing since I was a little kid. I would always play on the drums, like the toy drums. And I remember just, I really liked hitting things. things. <laughs> so it was like a perfect match for me. And my dad saw that I have really good coordination. And he asked me like, hey, like, are you up for lessons? Like, do you want to give it a shot? And I was like, yeah, nobody wanted to give me lessons. I was, a, I looked like a toddler. I mean, and like I was six, super short, short right. like playing the drums. It didn't look very, very promising for me, but uh, I met one teacher and I had like a, um, like a test class mm -hmm. and the teacher was like, oh, leave her with me. Like, like she'll be good. Like, let's do this. My parents bought me my first bass and of course I was really young and really short and I couldn't play a full scale bass, so they bought me a smaller bass, which I have right here. Right there. Yeah. yeah, it's really small, and I still couldn't play that. And I learned for about a month, and then we started playing, playing together, together immediately. So yeah. I didn't really have like that much time to get used to my instrument before we started playing together. Okay, wait, but I know that this isn't part of it. I'm going to ask you a do question. Do it, do it. Because it's like... Do it. Yeah. I know, I know, this isn't my place, but I will. Because there's a lot of people who tell you, like, why don't you play with a pick? Because normally oh, rock music true. is just like... Pick, but pick. you, like, from the start, it I was always like play with my finger fingers. style. It's, 
I yeah. play, I know how to play with a big now, and I do, I really do like I the sound come. of it. But I don't know, I just always played with my fingers and I do feel more comfortable with my fingers even though I do play more on time with a pick. It's weird. It does hurt more though, but... I get it. <laughs> it's like when I play without shoes and when I play with yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it's it. The big turning point in our careers. Like we did our Enter Sandman cover, which went viral. But I feel like the point where we were like, we really want to do this, like for the rest of our lives, was when we started writing our own music and releasing our own stuff. That was like, whoa. Like I can we can create something, yeah. put it out in the world, and people react to it. It was just something that we really, really like really? liked and looked forward to. So now that we are doing what we do today. Like, I, I just feel like it's the thing that really keeps us going, our music. Of course, like any type of siblings, like we have our disagreements and our little fights and stuff like that, but we get along really well. We and I, know each other so well that yeah. we know how to make it work. Exactly. And in the second that we start writing music, but everything just like, flows really nicely. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to call it except like sibling magic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those were our first compositions ever. ever. Mm -hmm. It was our first time writing. I was like 12, Danny was 14, and I was nine. We oh, were children. <laughs> but I, it was the moment where we really fell in love with music and like what we wanted to do. Like creating something was just such a powerful experience. And you know, it was such a key thing, I think, personally, that we were not thinking about will people like it, well, because we were not going to release it. We were not even going to record it. Uh, it was not going to be a thing. So we just literally wrote from our 14-year-old's hearts. And then we jump into our first album, 21st Century Blood and it was weird because some of the compositions that are in 21st Century Blood were written in the in same the time era of... as Escape the Mind mm -hmm. but there I, there was this very big leap we gave with this song that we made called Free Falling It was the first song we actually wrote together, together. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it was also a big thing that we started like looking for outside inspiration. We really like what's happening in the world that we can write about. And more than anything, like we read so much and we consume a lot of yeah. media as any Gen Z team does. <laughs> so we were constantly getting inspired by other Different stories scenarios. that we were hearing. Mm -hmm. So 21st Century Blood was like, we felt like it was our first step. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, okay, we're a band now. This is our album. And nothing will change. I'm crashing to space. I'm burning up. And then nothing I can pull out to sleep. And one thing that I really like that we do, we really looked for what the song needed. We were like, okay, so what if this is a song with only piano, violins, and stuff like that? Like, we didn't focus on, oh, we have to be a uh, rock we just focused on the energy that yeah. went into the song mm -hmm. so if you hear our music sometimes it will be very varied within mm -hmm. the same album but then queen of the murder scene comes it's our second album and queen of the murder scene <laughs> i was i was in middle school i started going through my emo phase so you can, you can hear clearly there how that shift 
and like, I'm angsty now. These songs and these albums like grew with us. It's yeah. literally you can see like the change. Yeah, in you can you can feel the like, personality. Yeah, and music. We yeah. know the murder scene is a concept album. It tells a story. A novel. It, yeah, it was like a novel, and it was a really different process writing songs to fit a narrative mm -hmm. and a plot. It was really hard. It was actually. hard because we had some. And then we had to add like the filler episodes, uh -huh. but yeah. we didn't want them to feel like filler, filler songs. songs. So we really had to put meaning into every single little part. Yeah. But I was like really into this idea of making it a whole album about this story. Yeah. And when I told them about it, they were like, what? Why is there blood everywhere? Why? I was like, we, please we hear had, me out. We had to change so much, like a lot story. of the storyline, because it was it wasn't it wasn't like much that. of a storyline. Yeah, it, it was just, just like murder. murder. Yeah. But at the same time, we were getting into. I was getting into K-pop. <laughs> That's true. I just so remember that too. We took the emo face K-pop, like. Route. Express line, right? Yeah. So you can hear a lot of influences in there that maybe you don't pinpoint them yeah. as such, but for us, it's really apparent like which faces we were going that through. That key change into the, the one. Those key like... changes, those <laughs> harmonies, like it was all very K-poppy for us. It's the thing that we also love to do. That as we start learning new ways of doing this, we just like, okay, what's the next thing that we can try out with our music? Yeah. So. And in, in Queen of the Murder Scene, it was key changes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It was, it was <laughs> definitely it change the key. That was a theme. Coming from Queen of the Murder Scene, things are really different now. Because mm -hmm. I feel like we really grew as people, Even as musicians, more, like, right? Because we're going through our teenage years. Of course, you grow a lot from one year to another. Mm -hmm. And you, you start living different experiences and stuff like that. So I feel like this third album is personal. Yeah. Like it talks more about our feelings or situations that are close to us or our opinions on certain situations. was one of the songs that we started writing together and we had music first yeah. before lyrics and melody. It's usually the other way around. So the three of us were in this, this room, room yeah. and yes, Danny right and I were like playing, like getting the riff. And I was like, let me write a melody really quickly for the verse and just like put some lyrics on there. I'm not in That's a good line. That's a cool line. I'm not line. in danger, I'm the danger. I do feel that it encases what this uh, new album represents for us, the changes that we went through as musicians, as people, and in writing, because we saw things differently. Like, right now, we really concentrated on adding a lot of, like, new harmonies and how like the bass and the drums were going to play together, together. and then differently at the same time. Like there is so much room to grow and we always enter these situations like with big wondrous eyes. Like we're gonna learn today. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna learn now? <laughs> What's gonna happen yeah. now? <laughs> You guys, this is you. Okay, everybody. Oye, como va? Mi ritmo bueno pa gozar. Mulata, oye, como va? Mi ritmo bueno pa gozar. Mulata, pam 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 pam
actually performing our songs live is a totally different really universe. Like we treat it as such, even uh, ourselves. We know it's nothing like recording in a studio, but it's so much fun. You're like directly sharing uh, and expressing to the people who are watching you. And like, I feel like live. our past albums, we try to grab like the sound like how we sound live into mm -hmm. our recordings and yeah. we never really oh, we have never accomplished we anything. never accomplished that until like this, this third album. album i've already collapsed so i'll just drown my sorrows in a non-existent world we put in a lot of hard work yeah into our live shows yes, we, we really plan everything out and yep. we practice it a lot <laughs> and even our, lot. our movements like if you see us playing in our early stages of the band oh, we're we just like <laughs> statues and that's something that we actually worked on consciously it's like how to play being able to like jump around and bring more energy to the show like, like, we make fun of each other while we're on stage <laughs> and i know like i shouldn't really be like saying this but even when we mess up we're like oh you messed up like, yeah, yeah. yeah. we just, we just look, like, at look at each other like, like oh, you, you messed, messed up, up. show in our country and in our home city it's just absolutely it's amazing crazy. actually our last show that we played was in mexico city and we hadn't been to mexico city in a long time yeah so coming back and seeing that we had more fans like there were a lot of people watching us it was just insane it was it one was of the so best cool. shows people like had. screaming our songs we actually have like a video where you hear everyone singing on top of like it's yeah like, like you you can't, you can't hear, hear us <laughs> Special. A big scene like, of energetic people yeah, ready yeah, people for people are really metal. passionate about yeah. music in general here in Mexico and the crowds are always really energetic. Like this energy that they transmit, you just can't help but give it back. It's really about making like a personal connection of what you want to transmit through your yeah. instrument. Cause I, I like I look at our past videos, like our covers. <laughs> no, no. And I'm like, no, no, what are you doing? But we were so young, we were starting out, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's a really nice thing. Looking back and see like seeing how much you've improved, how much you've grown. A veces las cosas son las más difíciles de ver. Te asfixiaste con tus propias manos. Cuando todo apunta que por fin alguien te viene a rescatar, te encuentras nuevamente abandonado. At the end of the day, like there's a goal and there's something that you want to reach. And it's really about putting in a lot of work and just also be very conscious that the people who work around you are different you know are going through different things and will think differently than you there's no one that will think exactly like you so taking things with a grain of salt and not taking things personal personally. for it to ruin like your experience is a key thing you know as sisters we really have like that separate you know our working selves and you know our sister selves people have these stereotypes or these stigmas like we've seen it in places we've played in festivals and stuff like that like the treatment is really different to like other bands like male bands but we see that change after like we play mm -hmm. yeah we play and then like people's faces completely change yeah. and like everyone's just so Which excited is fun to see because they remind themselves that it doesn't matter who is playing their age whatever it is it's about the music music is the language it doesn't matter like where you're from 
like what language yes. you speak, like anything. Like music is the, the language. language.